Hello, everyone. Good evening. Uh, Lexi and Ryan are back again for Gotham City tonight. We are just coming off of Emerald City Comic Con weekend. Um, so thank you, everyone, who was patient with us last week with our little mini Wednesday announcement um, and all of the busyness and hecticness. Uh, my son making a guest appearance, you know, saying hello to y'all. Um, was a ton of fun uh coming out of comic-con weekend we've got a lot of exciting things uh we were able to interview one of my personal favorite uh comic artists um and writers i mean she has just done so much within the industry um we also have some more ezra miller up uh, ezra miller updates because they are just the gift that keeps on giving right now um i'd like to touch a little bit on some more positive things uh the webtoon industry and some of the things that's going on there uh, we want to touch on some animation again tonight because warner brothers is the other gift that keeps on giving so <laughs> ryan why don't you kick us off <laughs> well yeah, well i guess to kick us off i noticed i noticed warner brothers has a style of releasing news uh so we get bad they give us the bad news first right they go here's a list of things we're no longer going to put on the streaming service they're not canceled by any means but we're just not gonna they're, they'll go somewhere else well well they'll they can go find a new home and then they follow up the next day with good news to make us forget about the day before or an hour ago's bad news they seem to have Which a so far has not worked for them none of their good news has been comparable to the damage that they are doing correct so i guess the first thing we'll bring up is uh the batman the caped crusader the new animated series uh spearheaded by you know bruce tim uh ed brawbaker uh, and there was a third name in there too and now i'm just dropping a blank but it's just uh you know it was a big thing. Like an uh, Ed Brawbaker getting like, he's a very amazing writer. Uh, and he's done it all from like Lois Lane to just Batman detective stories. This is supposed to be kind of like a year one or even just even earlier year one. Like we're talking like month one style Batman. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, the poster looked beautiful. We all saw what we were going to be getting. We never got a trailer yet. Uh, oh, there we go. Oh, Matt. There we go. See, John's on it. J.J. Uh, Abrams and Matt Reeves are also in. Matt Reeves is involved in everything. We'll get into that in a second too. And uh, yeah, they said, you know, all the headlines said, oh, they're canceling more things off of HBO Max. But when you read the article, it's really they're not going to be on HBO Max anymore. However, they haven't stopped production meaning they're looking for another outlet. So it could end up on Netflix. It could end up on prime. Uh, it could end up on Paramount plus any one of those. Which to me is a great yeah. sign. Cause it basically tells you that they know they have something good. Like they know that they have a good team. They know that there is a market for what they're doing. I mean, this one specifically more so than any of the other Batman animated we've been getting feels like they are really trying to recreate the success of Batman, the animated series, but they are doing it with a lot of the original creators. So I am optimistic about it. Yeah. I'm optimistic about it too. It's the Batman animation like ever since Batman animated series and on, even if it's not like the Tim verse has always been solid. Uh, it's always been very good. You can always tell the whoever's on board with those series are always, they take very good care of Batman and his family. And even if they're going a completely different direction or foreseeing a style or a look or new origins of characters, you can still tell they love these characters. Mm-hmm. So again, like I think we were gonna supposed to get like whole new updates on all all the classic rogues gallery, uh, but we never got to see pictures of it yet. So we we don't know. And hopefully, once they find a home, they'll they'll drop a trailer. And I really think it would be kind of funny if the if Batman the Cape Crusader ended up on Disney Plus somehow. You know what? It is entirely possible at this point, quite frankly. And I think I'm just very confused about the HBO Max mentality right now. That seems to be if it could even conceivably be for children in any way, we don't want it. And this isn't yeah. just me speaking as a new parent, even before Damien, you know, I loved a lot of what is traditionally children's media as animation sometimes gets brushed off as being. And 
I there is no successful media service out there that says anything we watch is going to be gory, violence, and adult, and you have no other options here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I just, what is it? I just saw it as well. They pulled off, they pulled out Sesame Street from the streaming service already, which to me is bonkers. Yeah, because that's Sesame I, Street. I mean, it's, I know it's not Batman related, but I mean, come on. It's like, it. we're talking about HBO Max at the same time. And it's just, it's bonkers yeah. to me that you would remove uh, Sesame Street. It's just so, it's money and it's, People love it. It's generational. And, mm -hmm. but I mean, HBO Max seems to be okay with doing more Matt Reeves Batman universe stuff for sure. Uh, because the next part of news was, you know, we've got the writers are coming back for the Batman 2. They've already started. Matt Reeves has signed on. He's signed on for multiple years. He's, uh, the Penguin is still a go for the HBO Max series, and they're still in talks for the Arkham Asylum series on mm -hmm. HBO Max. So, yeah, if that doesn't tell you that the Snyderverse, that, yeah, it's gone. We are now going full <laughs> Reeves, and he's getting multiple spinoffs and shows, and it's, I like, it's I'm the excited. Reeves world now. Yeah, I'm excited, but at the same time, it's like, at what cost? I know. And I was just <laughs> going to say the exact same thing that you start to worry that it's like they're doing that thing where they said, oh, this thing worked. This thing was successful. Now let's like drain it of every last, you know, coin, every last drop. And mm -hmm. that doesn't always go successfully. So, But again, we'll see what happens. Uh, it's <laughs> fun to watch the the uh, the Internet already speculate and already figure that like you, I can always tell now because everyone's speculating on who the villains are going to be and everybody's making fake posters, whether it's yeah. man bat court of owls, mad hatter, uh, Mr. Freeze, you name it. Everyone seems to have this idea and you can, I can look at all these accounts and go, everyone is trying to be that rumor that becomes the fact. Yes. And Absolutely. You could, you could tell by the way they're wording all their their tweets and stuff that I'm like, yep, I see what you're doing. And little do people know, Henry Cavill might show up on the show tonight. Absolutely. The <laughs> There's a non-zero chance anything can happen <laughs> and miracles exist. And miracles. <laughs> exactly. So it is, it is interesting to see how people are already like, you know, oh, it's going to be Bane. It's like, guys, calm down. Like, we're not where we, yeah. they've just started writing. You you can't confirm right. and you can't act like you know you ain't in the room. And I, For all I, we know, they can make an entire movie and then scrap it and we'll never see it. So. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm I'm really curious. I like, and hey, man, I'm excited and curious to who they're going to choose. Like, I have a thousand ideas oh, yeah. of what I would want to see in the next movie. Am I praying silently for Court of Owls? Maybe. Every maybe. night of my life. <laughs> absolutely like you know maybe i'm i'm hoping the movie ends with a you know a family dying at a circus you know right? or begins <laughs> with a family or, dying at a circus everyone it, it, but maybe <laughs> their only son i don't know yeah. i'm just spitballing <laughs> <Maybe>. here <laughs> right <laughs> maybe his mom has a cute little nickname for him like sparrow or crow or i yeah. don't know robin yeah you know. <laughs> <laughs> Any of those things would work. For Any a little bird themed nickname for her little acrobat son. I don't know. Like I said, yeah. spitballing. Exactly. It's like, and that's exactly how I'm just like. But I've also got to go in there with an open mind. Don't get your hopes up with your own head cannon. Just go in and hope for the best with these movies. It's, yep. But that's how I'm feeling. If that, I know we've got some people watching tonight. So if you are watching, first off, thank you. And two, Sound off. Who do you guys want to see in a sequel? Uh, also, who do you want to see completely redesigned as a villain for the Cape Crusader? Ooh, um, right? All of them. All of them. I, I'm not going to lie. I am kind of a sucker for as long as it's consistent. When a show, like, which one was it? There was the Batman and there was Brave and the Bold. And my brain crosses those wires sometimes. But it was the one where they just kind of went through and all of the designs were just out of left field. Just 
completely original. And I was like, you know what? When you're doing it across the board, I'm I'm kind of here for it. It's when everything feels pretty consistent that you have the one off that's just like completely different for no apparent reason. But when you're going down the line and you're like, okay, there is a style that they are all adhering to. I, I can enjoy that. Yeah, I think I think you're talking about the Batman because that was the one where we had like yeah. Joker with dreadlocks. We had that was the one. Yes. Yeah, uh, Harley Quinn had her own talk show. Uh, Bane was like that was fun. Bane he was, that like, was tomato bane wasn't it where he the turned tomato like, bane yeah bread. that's the yeah that is the <laughs> best way to that is the best way to put it was tomato bane but i still loved it i still i thought it was wild i did i enjoyed it because the spirit was still there in every character um yes and it was fun yeah i loved it too we got we got john sounding off i'm just saying if the floods from Mother's attack knocked out the power to the machines <laughs> keeping Nora freeze alive and her husband went out for revenge, I'd be down. Just now, spitballing. Just spitballing as well. If we got Riddler's floods, uh, I know a certain crocodile man that would probably also excel in hiding in the streets underwater. I'm also going to throw that out there. A little killer croc action. Uh, Oz was saying, I want to see them do a Zaz movie. Oh, straight up Zaz. Uh, Batman tracking a serial killer. And I think that Matt Reeves universe would be the proper place for it. That detective energy, absolutely. And it could be like, it seems to have, oh, and I could see where that would work too, because seeing as what Matt Reeves was doing with the Riddler and his, uh, his traps that are just kind of, what's that? Why? I'm, every show, man, I got a blank when I need to think of the name. But anyways, yeah, it's like those horror movies uh, where the people are all putting these. Oh, Saw? Saw. It's like that. <laughs> you know, it's very close to that. Very close to the Zodiac Killer as well, which is, you know, he played the Zodiac Killer, you know, and it would, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, yeah, I could totally see Zaz fitting in that style of universe of finding these crazy mutilated bodies and this guy who mutilates his own body. Yeah. You know, I have fact. to address this comment. Professor Pig could be pretty cool in the Reevesverse. You are not technically wrong. Ooh, Professor Pig and I, that I have <laughs> difficulty reading stories with Professor Pig in them. I'm not even going to lie. He's a tough one for me. And it's not anything about anyone that enjoys him. I don't like horror movies. People I love like horror movies. It's all fiction. I totally get it. There's a fun in the gore and the horror to it. He just crosses lines for me. He is so creepy. Yes. Oh. But that's what Ooh. that's why I love him because I he's, know. <laughs> he's Ooh, a I doctor. I don't know if I can get through a live action Professor Pig actually. That might cross a little too much into horror for me. Right? He's that doctor who wears a pig's head. It's just yeah, he would definitely cross he does over on his horror. victims. His victims are always like it's it's something next level. Yeah. Like it's You're, not just violence. Yeah. It's cuz he goes past violence. It's he, yeah, he mutilates, and he and these people have to survive, right? Because he's yeah. trying to he's trying to That's perfect the thing, them. That's the thing is they live, they live. Yeah, and you almost wish they didn't. It's Get, horrifying. Yes, and uh, I I'm all for it. I I yeah, I get why. Mm -hmm. If you're not into horror, Professor Pig is probably not going to be your dude. He probably isn't because, you know, he's going to be doing, we're going to see operations Gross. done in a meat locker. Do you know what I oh, mean? Yeah. Like it would be. You're going to see the people cool. like begging Batman to kill them. Like the, the horror, like, please kill me. Right. Yes. And like, so be... don't be wrong. So I just had to address this because this is not an attack on anyone who enjoys Professor Pig or writes him. Like, I, I'm not saying he's a bad character. I just, I don't know if I could do it. <laughs> he's not my vibe. Oh, uh, no. And I, I get that. Give me too. Firefly. Give me Firefly. Give me, I, like, and I was thinking anyone too, else, like, literally anyone, but. I want them to hold off Robin or Mad. I want them to hold off Mad Hatter for when we have an established oh. Robin. Okay. Because we got a dude that kidnaps teenage girls dresses them up as Alice and kind of brainwashes them a little bit with his cards, which is yeah. like a thousand different ways triggering in a, a lot of ways. Right. Oh, yeah. But it would be to me having Robin to be part of that would be like 
hey, Bruce, there's like girls missing from my school. Yeah, I mean, having the the right? child hero for the child victim is definitely like a usually like a good dynamic to be able to kind of have there and play with. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And John was saying here too, having a, you know, body whore with clay face and, you know, that's, that's another character. I'm down too. for that's, that. Yeah, me too. Me too. I, can I would love to see how they would do clay face. And I, I kind of hope they won't shy away from the mutation comic bookiness from it. Yeah. I was going to say, he's one of those characters where you kind of just have to let him be corny to a degree. And so towing that line in live action would be a challenge. Not impossible, for sure. But right. trickier than, you know, Riddler, than Professor Pig, you know. Yeah, because those, those characters are very grounded. Mm -hmm. Those They're kind of people, they, yeah, they could be real. <laughs> Yikes. <Right>? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, I think that's really, I think we just... I don't know if we have any more updates outside of like any stuff from the Matt Reeves universe. I think that's all we know. That's the big. They're announcement. playing it pretty close to the chest, which good for them. Honestly, good for them, right? <laughs> yeah. So, but we got a new recurring segment on the show, and we actually have Somehow. a soundbite from uh, from Jim, who's like he's one of our viewers, one of my like the viewers I have on Toy Anxiety on a regular basis. And he made our show something special so that we could give more regular updates. I, I hope you folks are ready because this is uh this is something else. But here we go. It's time for the Ezra Miller update. It's Miller time. Now you wanna get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. I have <laughs> feelings about the fact that Ezra Miller is like this regular thing on this show, because I am definitely kind of a believer in like no audience, no show, right? Like someone who is doing the things that they are doing, you almost don't want to give them the attention, right? Like a child throwing a tantrum. You, you <laughs> kind of just want to step back and say, get some help, sit in time out. Like we'll talk when, when you're done. But, but the fact of the matter is we talk about the, you know, this, DC movie cinematic universe and they are a very core part of it as the flash and <laughs> there has been no announcement that they will not be the flash so here we are week after week engaging with these tantrums yes and <laughs> even though there's not really big news since i think his public that their publicist must have gotten a major raise for that wonderful statement of retribution which yeah. I, I am still not quite sure how to digest it mentally of what I read of like it almost came to me came off to me like lol well, just kidding is what it was. yeah yes it was, it was just textbook hey sit a PR person down take accountability apologize say what you'll mm -hmm. do next check check check, check, that, check. that's exactly yep. what it was and they they knew that there was nothing else that they could do they just had to check the boxes put it out there move on yep that's it that's all because it wasn't ezra making the statement no we haven't heard them apologize at all about anything and i i understand right. that they're that warner brothers is probably trying to keep ezra off the camera and just Probably they don't want to have what any they're going to say. <laughs> yes. Right. And I would be certain that they're that uh, Warner Brothers would be like, if anyone gets a soundbite of anything, th it's going to just get twisted. So let's just, yeah, you know, paint by numbers. Yeah. Well, because you, you can tell Warner Brothers wants so badly to keep whatever they did with Ezra Miller Flash. You can tell they are fighting tooth and nail to, to not have to scrap this and start this over. And I do empathize with that. Like when you think about all of the different people, just the sheer number of human beings that work on a movie, like if you had someone who was, I don't know, like one 
small part, if there was like an assistant prop maker who did all of the things that Ezra did, we would not be talking about canceling this movie. We would not be talking about throwing it out, you know? So it is extremely, and I'm not saying that that's a small role by any means. It's not. Every role is very critical, but there is a limelight on certain roles, um, you know, when they became a face of it. So it is extremely frustrating, you know, like, you know, there's the part of you that wants to say, well, why should Ezra get all of this? But on the other hand, you want to say, well, why should everyone else lose all of that because of one person? Right. And and here, okay, that's a great segue because I don't know how much more we can talk about Ezra Miller. <laughs> but this is a great segue because speaking of people that lost a lot of, a lot with all of this, uh, they're going to be doing a cast and crew screening of Batgirl at the, um, at the Warner Brothers lot out in Burbank somewhere. So if really? if any, by chance, someone comes across this show that works at Warner Brothers, that um, has a phone, that could do a little bit of recording and, uh, you know, do their thing, like, you know, get get some extra footage for us, you know? Uh, heck, if, if they need an outlet to even play, like, the movie... We'll stream it on our YouTube channel, um, and we'll be happy to Absolutely. do that for the Bat. We'll do that for Cape Crusader as well. We'd be more than happy. You. Yeah, we'll host you. I'll, I'll, I'll put, I'll throw the, our hat in the ring there for that. And uh, I'm really, I there's a weird part of me that's just like thinking that they're still gonna. I just don't think they can help themselves to like bring in influencers of some sort. Right. Influencers, right? There's gotta be, and I think. What I actually hadn't heard that. And that to me is so fascinating because I was actually just reading an interview with the directors where they were kind of given the go ahead where they were like, hey, our movie's getting scrapped. And they were told to go in and like try and like do a cell phone recording. So they had something of the movie. And he said that when he went to go and recorded, it was already gone. It yeah. was already yep. so, so they didn't destroy it entirely they just kept it from you know the creators it's fine that's better. they did not want it leaked by whatever means possible just so let just let it get leaked leak it get leaked leak you bat girl that's you the hashtag. didn't do it yeah hashtag leak <laughs> bat girl gosh but i'm here I, I they're really going to do a screening of it they're really going to do a screening of it i got uh I have to thank Tro my friend Troy Benjamin. He gave me the update on that. And they well, were... Can he get yeah. your tickets to that, too, is a, the next question. Se secret Batgirl, Batgirl screenings hit the Warner Brothers lot in a Hollywood Reporter exclusive. They're calling it funeral screenings. Oh! Which is, like, dark. <laughs> that hurt. But, but there it is. So they're already doing them, apparently. So... Which is awesome. Like, I mean, that's great for the cat, like for the cast and crew, because I'm, I am certain they are, like, they want right. to see. I their... mean, it's something. It just feels like a band aid on a sucking chest wound, you know. <laughs> I, like it, it is something, and I'm, and if they're happy, I'm happy for them. But yeah, it's just not enough. It is not enough because oh. it'll still be unfinished. It's not like it's a finished movie. Right, they stopped partway through with the, you know, so it'll be curious to see what the edit's going to look like that they get to see. And I really am hoping that someone's just sitting there with like wh whatever happened to like Google, 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 glasses. Google glasses, yes, yeah, whatever happened to those? Remember, that was like a thing, and people Someone's were like, have one somewhere, yeah, right? It's Hollywood, little, like lapel camera and your button, or, or the giant cowboy hat, yeah. With with the hole in it, like yeah, where... <laughs> absolutely, do what you gotta do, you guys. Yeah, make this happen. We need to see Batgirl because I we can't we can't pick it apart if we don't see it. And not well, that we want to. We could end up loving now, it now, where people are so mad at Warner Bubbles, Warner Brothers. I bet you money. It's like you know when an artist dies and then suddenly their art like is more valuable than it ever was before. I feel like this will like be the Batgirl effect. If it gets leaked, no matter what, everyone's going to be like, Oh my God, you should have released it. It's so good. Like it's, it could be, could you remember this would have been, gosh, though, so this is now over five years ago. 
because Wonder Woman, the movie's been like five years ago, the first one. So before the Wonder Woman movie, there was that Wonder Woman TV show pilot that never aired. Oh, yeah. And, but then that was, they got a hold of a copy of that. And that was like one of the hottest sellers at Comic-Con for bootlegs. Because everybody wanted to, you know, you hear it, you everyone wanted to see it, and they were just like, yeah. apparently it was really, really, really bad. Uh, <laughs> uh, but Yikes. that's beside the point. The point but is, that's what pilots like, are for. Like, like that's kind of the, the point of a pilot, you know, is that it it's, it's still allowed to get nixed at that point. That's not, that's, oh, but this is a movie. I'm fine. With a, with a budget and with actors and actresses and God. you know so it's i i still think something's at one point there's we're gonna all of a sudden get these like weird dvd releases of like camera footage shaky phone footage i hope so you know. i hope i'll so. buy I it would, i will put I'll, money uh, down i will put up a projector and uh i will charge we'll do our own funeral screening it. That's right, and then all that uh, we'll 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 donate we'll donate the money <laughs> that we make from it, and we'll we'll do something. But we just need to get a whole. Yeah. We just need a copy of this movie. So as soon as we oh. get that, make it happen. Seriously, I thought that was really, really do these funeral screenings, and nothing leaks. I will be shocked. I will be absolutely stunned. Same here. Yep. Same. Even if Even it's just, just more... like photos. Yeah. More yeah, stills. or more clips or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I yeah, will be. There's got to be something. There's yeah, and if, which means that the file still exists, and I would not doubt if the directors are going to try and get a hold of it. But depending on what so. their contract status is, that will depend on, because at the end of the day, it's going to be it belongs to the studio, not the directors. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's heartbreaking. It's brutal. Ah, it's frustrating. <laughs> Absolutely frustrating. And so many hours, and yeah. We talk about it every week and I'm mad again every week. Cause again, yeah. especially like <laughs> to have a woman of color stepping into such an iconic comic book role. Yep. And to think that you are about to be that representation for your identity, for, you know, what you feel like your people for little girls who look like you and to yep. have that taken from you is, Oof. Yeah, that it's not, it is not cool. I'm just trying to see if there's anything more on it. I don't think there is, Never but I it's. Wish. You really gosh. got the inside scoop on that one. Yeah, well, the news just, it legit just broke like right before we started. Wow. And uh, yeah, it's it's wild. Yeah, and our. Who... Yep, John, yep, seriously, it's... hyped for a biracial Batgirl? Yes. Yes, <laughs> because let me tell yeah. you too, and obviously everyone's experience is different, um, but even for myself, like as a half Thai, half German Jewish, like little girl, someone who looked like her, who was biracial and we did not share the same ethnicity, but she was brown and she you know, has dark hair and she's mixed race, like in a world of so many white faces, I still would have clung to that representation, you know? And so it was, it was so many young kids who maybe would have finally had a chance to see themselves. Um, Cause even, you know, Wonder Woman, um, uh, Gal Gadot is beautiful and I love her as Wonder Woman, you know, but she's still a fair skinned, you know, she's fairly white passing in her appearance. Um, and there's still mm -hmm. a lot of girls that could feel represented by her, but there's still a huge sweeping of girls that don't. Um, even right. when you go back to the Marvel universe, especially like as an Asian woman, we had Mantis who was done. I will scream this from the rooftops, such a racist disservice in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They really took what was a powerful female character in the comics and changed her to adhere to racist female Asian stereotypes. She is a walking stereotype. And it was so disappointing and frustrating to see. And we have not been given another Asian woman in the cinematic universe to make up for it. So the fact that You're DC, right. this woman in this role, 
and it was taken. Like there are just so few, and I will preach this from the, there are just so few. It's like when we talk about why it matters so much when Disney puts out a princess of color, it's like a football game versus a baseball game. You know, when you have another white hero, it's like another baseball game. There are literally hundreds of baseball games in a season. A football season only has so many, so every game matters that much more. So when you take one away, it hurts. It hurts and it sucks. And that is my rant about that. I will take a breath. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's you're you you're you're absolutely right, actually, because it's it's across the board. Like it's it's a DC and a Marvel thing. Like even mm -hmm. when we got uh, Katana in uh, Suicide Squad, it was the same. Deal. Didn't even like she, speak. She didn't even speak, and it was like <laughs> the Mystic Samurai Sword was oh, her the talking mystic, point. And... Quiet Asian girl. Ooh, yeah, that's never right? been done before. Right. Nice. So, it, you, but you know what I mean, right? Like it's just it's all yeah. like she was one purple streak in her hair away from being the literal total <laughs> the absolute Literally. stereotype. But yeah, you you are absolutely correct, and it's. uh you know, I'm going to toot my own horn here about Into the Spider-Verse because I think that's why that movie, uh, to me, proved that you can have all of these characters not always be white and actually not even be the titular character. Like, I, I am, I've, I've become more accustomed to Miles of Spider-Man at this point than Peter Parker. And even though Peter Parker... Peter Parker's only still partially my Spider-Man because when I was reading comics the most, I was still reading Ben Riley, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> but like, so it's I'm always like, so my mind's always kind of there of like, yeah, Peter Parker Spider-Man, but so is this guy, and so is this guy, and so is this woman, and it's, you know, I, I think that's why I see when I see Phil Lord and Chris Miller do it with Spider-Man, it has me go why why can't we get more of this because when i watch into the spider verse i live in a big city all of these take place in a big city for the most part and that it feels like that's what life feels like when you live in a big city everything is diverse you know uh i think who what uh it was uh neil adams when he would did create a john stewart green lantern like mm -hmm. he went as far as being like why why, if we're going to do a new Green Lantern, why does he have to be white? And he had to fight why? for it because, it, because it's just like, you're telling me other races can't be without fear. And then that spread to why can't it be someone outside of the United States? And, you know, we've got a very diverse Green Lantern core for this particular Earth. Mm hmm. And I just want to, we're starting to get that way slowly with like uh, Wonder, like the Wonder Woman family as well. Yeah, it's growing right. slowly but surely. The Amazons are are not just a bunch of white women anymore. Mm-hmm. Because why so would that, they be? Right. We we've got Signal, who's like one like, you know, we oh, got yeah. Signal and Cass, Cassie, right? So it's like mm -hmm. everything slowly starts to get there. And Cassie too is the other another trope of the Asian woman who doesn't speak. But it's but like I do love her because when she uses her <laughs> sign, the way they give her a voice, I appreciate Cass a lot. And I think that's actually kind of an awesome segue a little bit to the webtoons because Wayne Family Adventures is mm. has really gone that step above to draw, I mean Dick Grayson um has a darker skin tone uh damian wayne is probably the darkest i've ever seen him drawn in canon like the most like brown skin um and it's really fantastic to watch uh duke thomas signal is a huge part of it he's not forgotten mm -hmm. you know and again this wasn't like a weird sweeping thing where suddenly everyone from bruce to every like everyone was brown it's like whoa scary you know because people would lose their minds heaven forbid um but they like went in and they made conscious choices and they said, why are all of these characters the exact same? And it makes right. sense that they wouldn't be. Um, and there was actually, so speaking of canceled things as well, I almost cried when I, I think it was a confusion in licensing where they didn't fully understand how much 
right they had to the bat fam characters um but there was almost a like youtube series live action of wayne family adventures and it was an asian dick grayson and an asian tim drake that were cast and that cast it was barbara gordon in her wheelchair um it was a really fantastic cast looking at their costumes every preview that came out of it I was more excited for that than almost any live action Batman anything in a really long time or even animated. And it never made it because um, I guess there was an issue with the license licensing. And I think about that every day, how close we were to having Asian Dick and Tim. I think I think the actors were real life brothers. Um, oh, real life older and younger cool brother, too. if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, so it was like this whole thing and then it didn't happen and I cried about it. That's, you know, <laughs> I didn't know. I gotta, I have to find that trailer. Oh, I'm the, so wait, cute. there's no trailer, but there are photos, and the photos are, oh. um, you know, I'm actually gonna try and pull something up now, see if I can find it, because I think I can. If you want to chat for a sec while I figure out technology. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> so as she looks for, through that, what also is spin is is the Red Hood, and the Outlaws. Is that a spinoff from the Wayne Family um, Adventures, or is this something completely new? So it seems like it's something completely new, but in that same webtoon style, uh, because in this one, I mean, Jason Todd has some interesting tattoos going on, um, but it is him and Artemis and Bizarro, and it seems to be a little more mature, maybe the Wayne Family Adventures, but still that accessible, um, you know, the bright colors, that same art style, uh, a little more child-friendly than maybe the actual comic books are right yeah especially those ones in particular if you've got red hood in a comic it's usually an older teen older teen and up kind of book and especially the uh the outlaws books as well it deals with the it can get pretty violent and you know we're dealing with p characters with uh with past and uh they've all been kind of heroes at some point or have seen themselves as heroes in, in bizarro's case and uh you know, it's Bizarro's got actual friends and he tries to do the right thing. It's I don't know. I for anyone who hasn't read it, I I don't think it ever hit never properly hit rebirth in that style, but it was definitely one of the more popular uh new fifty two books. So, you know, if uh again and the art too is actually really cool for that series as well. So if you ever decide you just want to pick something up randomly, new fifty two uh Red Hood and the Outlaws, I would highly suggest uh, picking it up. The, yeah, it's it's just, it's super cool. And you actually get to see like moments where Superman interacts with uh, Bizarro as well, which is, and he doesn't, he treats him better than Connor, which I think is kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me figure out the technology because I think you all need to see these images, quite frankly. Do, 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 do. Oh, here we go. Okay. Uploading files. Hold on. Okay. She can do this. Um, I am definitely not Oracle. So yeah. we are <laughs> figuring it out. Okay. Maybe I can't do this. Maybe she's oh. doing her best. <laughs> this might be a preview for next week's show, folks. Oh, wait. I can just share my screen. Hold on. You can do that. Let me let's Hopefully just do that. Okay. We're about to share some screen. Hopefully it'll it'll work for you. Sometimes I know I've had trouble with this. Huh. Oh, perfect. So here was their red hood design. Like that oh, was the cool. costume for Red Hood. Right? I love it. Here is I think that's supposed to be, I think it's that Tim or Dick and Damien. And then you've got Bruce in the background. There's Duke and Steph, I think. Um, so those were them. This was the kind of the family photo. And I did confirm, uh, Dick and Tim were brothers, like in real life. So that was okay. all of them in the gym. And here was another set photo. You can kind of see the Nightwing costume there. Um, the Batman suit in the manor. So they were like filming, filming this. Oh, and it, yeah, it's IGN posting about it too. So what? Yeah. I wonder what the problem is. 
Yeah, so I think it literally just came down to uh, they didn't actually have the license that they thought they had to move forward with it. Wow. Because that looks Hood so costume. good. Yeah, the Red Hood costume looks way better than the one in Titans. Right? And the Damien being like an actual like child and the, uh, yeah, everything about it was fabulous. That- I was so excited. They were like releasing all these photos of like the Dick Grayson actor's butt. It was everything anyone wants, you know, from a Wayne family. But series, that's what so. it's all about. At, at the end of the day, if we're talking about Dick Grayson, where's the cake? Oh, and he was so excited. He was on TikTok, like, making all of these hilarious videos about, like, living up to the Dick Grayson booty. Like, he had the energy. It was so much fun. I was following this series so closely. And when it just, like, didn't, I wanted to cry. I love that. Guys are feeling the pressure of the booty. The booty. If you're going to be Dick Grayson, it's a lot of cake to live up to. It's true. But I love that. I love that people are acknowledging it. It's a thing. And I think that's uh, even in Teen Titans Go, when they do like go when they go to the future and Nightwing shows up, he's always got this like little booty that jiggles when he walks. It's just like (laughs) this is like it's such a thing. Yeah, it's definitely right? gone a little too far. I have seen some recent comic panels that have me questioning anatomy study a little bit because I think I've seen some artists going like real hard on that booty and it's literally the cartoon like whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah, and you're yeah. like, well, it's not quite. Or he's like twisted in a way and his butt's like sitting on his hip. Like it's right. like you look at him from the front, but they need you to see he still has ass. So it's like, yeah. Like, <laughs> Well, that's not quite how far we needed to go with that. Oh, that's so funny. Uh, do we want to dive into uh, Emerald City Comic Con yes. and Joelle Jones? Oh, my gosh. We do if you want me to fangirl again. I kept it yeah. together so hard talking to her. It was awesome. <laughs> uh, it's, and it was great, too, because they had almost – they had a lot of Catwoman artists and, and like, Teeny Howard was there. Uh, yeah. Sozo Meka was there, who's doing all those like, uh, like crazy awesome, sexy variant Catwoman covers. She was there. She's super nice. If you know, she's been replying to our DMs now on Instagram as well. So we're going to uh, <laughs> hopefully, and we talked to Teeny a lot too. So yeah, uh, I definitely did the same then. thing with her that I did with you, where I mentioned I don't like Professor Pig. And she mentioned that she's working on Professor Pig right now. So, you know, <laughs> that's just, I just need to not speak clearly yeah. when I talk to people. <laughs> yeah, spoiler <laughs> alerts for uh, for anyone reading Catwoman currently. But yeah, <laughs> the, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, so we're hoping to get Teeny on as well at some point. Uh, she did give us, the, they both gave us their uh, personal email so that we can reach out. So here's hoping and here's hoping this will lead to uh, more interviews with more people. And uh, yeah, should we just hop right into it? Yeah. Everyone loves listening to themselves talk on a recording. That's okay. Well, it's never uncomfortable. We're, we'll, we'll leave, we'll leave the stream and we'll, and we'll come right back when this is over. I hope you guys enjoy this interview. We'll go do some shots. See you at the end. Yes. <laughs> Hi, um, Lexi and Brian here with Gotham City tonight, and we are super excited to do what is probably going to be our only interview here at Emerald City Comic Con, because this has been an insane weekend, no pressure at all. <laughs> um, if you'd like to introduce yourself as well. Uh, I'm Joelle Jones, uh, author, creator of uh, Lady Killer, I've been on the list of uh, <laughs> Catwoman and Way of the Body. <laughs> That's yeah. I did it, not create that. One. And did this not, is Ryan. Yes, I'm Ryan. Say? Yes, the other host, as you all, well, well, whoever knows, <laughs> past people from the watch the last four episodes of them. Uh, but yeah, no, thank you for hanging out with us and giving us some time today. Uh, one, th- I, Lady Killer's been a huge thing. But then you also got to go on to Catwoman. Uh, but before that, you were working with Tom King on his run, and you got to kind of like you got to do that epic team up with Wonder Woman. Uh, can you kind of talk about that a little bit? And that was like, like how awesome that must have been? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
I mean, uh, I I always wanted to do Batman, but I, I just didn't think it would ever happen, right? Right. So the call came, and I was like, uh, a little stressed out about it, but yeah, okay, I'll do it. And, uh, I knew about the wedding and all that, and uh, going into it, and I was beyond excited to be part of you know a huge event like that. And then working with Tom King was incredibly rewarding. Like, yeah, <laughs> he's, he's such a good writer. He, he adapts the style of, like every artist he works with, or you know, and I was trying to figure out how to work with each other. It was, yeah, it was really fun. It was a really good lesson for me. Yeah, because like, yeah, just to give Tom King just a couple, few more props with that too, because sure. you're you're right, because he's able to like continue his story. It does feel like all the same story, yet he does play to the abilities like yourself, Lee Weeks, which Jared's right. Like he yeah. just seems to really know how to utilize the artist he has, it. like, and he just seems to get it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's very clear, I think, in his storytelling and the way he writes scripts and how it's all put together that he loves the art. Like, and, and for an artist, it's incredibly rewarding that he wants the writing and the art to work hand in hand. And, it, you know, I think he's, he's an amazing writer. Yeah, he's yeah. very perfect. I mean, your art is incredible. I feel like sometimes we have a lot of fans who are newer to comics. I feel like there's kind of a misconception, like, oh, you know, all comic books look the same. Right. It's that same style. And really, when you go from artist to artist, it's so different. And I remember your art was at the Bat Cat Wedding, was just such a huge event. And I remember being so obsessed with it in the lead up, the wedding dress. <laughs> Can I ask us about that dress? Like, what was your inspiration for that? Because I'm also a cosplayer. So, as oh. a fan, it's beautiful as a cosplayer. How dare you? Because now I want it. Yeah. <laughs> I I bullied my way into doing the dress. Uh, I, I as soon as I knew I was doing uh, the book with Tom King, the, the wedding, I'm like, well, she's wearing a dress. I want to design it because I'm really that woman would never wear the wedding dress that every girl wears and every yeah. right. sweetheart neckline, mermaid skirt. That's not her and. I'm a huge Catwoman fan, and I, mm -hmm. you know, I just don't, I didn't want to see that happen to her. Yeah, no, and thank you for that. <laughs> the black on it, too, was just, I mean, it was, yeah. it was Catwoman, like you said. Well, I did, uh, like, five designs, uh, and uh, Tom King's daughter, I picked the final one. Oh, that's really sweet. Yeah, cool. she's got really good taste, so. Yeah. Um, I did not know, however, that other artists would have to draw it. That's a, that's a different I problem for another time. I felt very bad afterward. After I saw all the covers. Well, the statue as well. Man, oh my gosh. Right? In the issues of the statue, I, I felt awful. But, you know. <laughs> but, DC committed to the look because it was a fabulous look. So. Yeah, it was on covers. Like I said, covers, posters. I was surprised it didn't get a toy. Like an actual, a full-on action figure. Like it's, it became, it, it became it's iconic it's in its own way. Hard. <laughs> too much light. Yeah. <laughs> it's so but the, and that was and because of that, because of all that work on there, is that what they gave you Catwoman, or did you have to like again, did you have to pull your way into getting a Catwoman type? Well, it's funny, it's, uh, before Tom approached me, I pitched them Catwoman. But she was being used in Batman. Right. <laughs> uh, and uh, so they're like, Well, why don't you work on Batman and then when Catwoman leaves? Take her. Okay. Uh, so I pitched them this crazy story, all this stuff, and then like, oh yeah, but she's coming up and leaving him at the altar. Rewrite the entire story. Oh. 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 So you know, it, it was just hitting the ground running and, and, and writing and drawing a monthly book and yes. figuring it out as I went uh, with the story. So. Uh, but honestly, it was a dream come true. I love Catwoman. Always, always wanted to draw. It shows. It showed in everything that you did. That I got strong opinions about her look. <laughs> yeah, oh, like, and again, like it's uh, that new costume she got for that run as well. Mm. Um, it's now to me it's like it's right up there with the Darwin Cook costume. It's right up there with the. Uh, well, I don't know about that. That's my favorite. Costume. It's 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 up there. It's because it's like you know, it's like, but it's because it it looks like it evolved from that. It looks like it's that mix of 
It's got a little bit of Pfeiffer. It's got a little bit of Darwin Cook. Not a lot of Jim Bolin, but that's okay. I, but it's uh, I, I told the colors, uh, Laura Allman, yes. to give it a purple sheen to pay homage to the Jim Oh, so that is there. Yeah. Yes, that's <laughs> awesome. Because that's a that's a legendary run too within itself, right? Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. like it's a very I can't, like that's her first run, as far as I know. Anyone in the chat? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I think originally when you first see her, I don't even know if she's necessarily in the Catwoman getup. Her name is Cat. This is actually her first name, and she was just what in like a power suit. I think the first few times you see her, or somewhere along that line. She wears like a, a, there's a, a full cat head. Yeah. yeah. So in the in the series, I wanted to uh, draw her in every costume she's ever been in. So there's a few double page spreads that show the evolution of first costume all the way to, to now. And it was just a fan fulfillment, really. There was no reason for it. So character-wise, how do you feel about the fact that they had her leave that minute in the altar? Because we know that that's like, I mean, in comics, you rarely get heroes who get to actually get married. Right. You know, you had... Kate Kane didn't get to marry Maggie. Throwing it way back to Grayson and Starfire, more modern oh, than right. Barbara. Like, you never make it like you have all these engagements, all these proposals in comics, and you so rarely get to the altar. Right? And even when they do go to the altar, they make a deal with the devil. Right? Yeah. And something goes wrong. <laughs> and something goes wrong. Yeah. Do you know, I, uh, to me, when I, I knew that she was going to leave with the altar, and, uh, to me, that made sense. She's an anti hero. Mm -hmm. But you know, uh, that man's married to his job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. It just makes sense. And uh, he's still full of angst. Why not throw a little bit more his way? But, you know, the way Tom wrote it, I thought it was really poetic, really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and for any fan that was raging that they didn't get married, mm -hmm. maybe a, didn't I feel really read great. it and, yeah. and, and, you know, uh, yeah. get the context behind it because. There were really beautiful reasons for it. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's actually what made it so heartbreaking the fact that everything leading up to her being in the altar was like so beautiful. Like all of her interactions with the family, like yes. her, her moments, like her very like stepmom moments of being in the like, And Batman yeah. opening oh. up. Yeah. yeah. Do you, like um I tell people this and they always kind of like look at me like I'm weird and I say Tom King's run is my favorite Batman run. Yeah, I love it. Um and I've been reading Batman, you know, since the nineties and I still say it's like this. It, would, it became that book where I, I usually trade weight just because of like storing floppies it gets difficult, especially after collecting for thirty years. So I just kind of like trade weighting, and then I, I started doing that, with, and then I started like nope, I have to go in on Wednesday and get it. Yeah, I have to go. I, I would. It was first time in years where I had to go buy his book, yeah. take it back to my desk at work, read it, cry. Explain to my coworkers why I'm crying and that's not working. <laughs> While reading a Batman book. And then, like, yeah, I'm sitting there reading Batman. And it's it, it hit me at such an emotional chord, too. And yeah. even when she left and how he reacted with it, because the whole thing with the jury duty and that whole issue, too. Oh, and yeah. He's just, he's not handling it well. Like, yeah. Because it was a, an actual. Well, it's not like. Well, it's a defeat of Batman. A very emotionally, like, uh, mature. <laughs> he's got issues. Right? Know. Yes, but, yeah. But that was the thing. I think some people, too, that complained about Tom King's run didn't they see Batman or Bruce as some sort of, like, lady-killing god. Mm -hmm. And he's never been that. Like, really, like... You know, but the great thing is, is that uh, when you play with DC characters, you're playing in somebody else's sandbox. Mm -hmm. So a writer will come in and, and take the toy and yeah. make a story, <laughs> put it back on the shelf, and it's somebody else's turn. Yeah. So... There's a Batman story that will hit somebody yes. in a certain way. And it's just, you know, what, what emotionally do you connect with? Right. That's a great thing about a character that's been around for like 80 <laughs> plus years. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I think that's why it was like so easy for me to go like right into your run on Catwoman. Like just bring it back to you, right? <laughs> like it's just like because, you know, you got you get so invested with that run. And it's just like I need answers. What what happened, and now you have it just led me right directly into your run, where I was just buying all the floppies for that because it was just <laughs> like I I needed to know, right? And of course, and I knew I've been reading comics for so long. We're not you're we're never gonna get the answer right away. Of course, it's, that's why we keep coming back. We keep coming back for. <laughs> I mean, they're always gonna have a cliffhanger. They have to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I do want to, I think final question would be, 
just tell us what it is that you love so much about Catwoman. Because I also like she's the reason I cut my hair. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely when you're a little girl. There's very few dark hair, powerful women that mm-hmm. you get to look up to, and she was definitely one of mine. And I love the way you bring her to life. So I just love to hear from your perspective, like what it is exactly that you love so much about. Her. You know, it's the same thing. She really spoke to me when I was really young. Uh, it, you know, I've been reading comics a long time, but I never read any Batman books. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was a Marvel fan. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I was exposed to her in the cartoon. Uh, and, you know, and then Michelle Pfeiffer. And then I started picking up the books. And for me, it was a very complicated, interesting, uh, multifaceted woman that uh, I had not seen in comics before, and, and rarely at that time, it's seen on screen. Uh, and people always ask, is she good, is she bad? She lives in this gray area, and the fact that people always want to know what it's compelling, she's a, a complicated character, a complicated woman character, which is hard to find. But, yeah. uh, you know, I knew that I'm a hot mess, so <laughs> she, uh, yeah. and, you know, uh, she's a, a superhero, so yeah, you know, I maybe really I got a shot. Yeah. Whereas <laughs> there is, like, I think especially you know, back then in media, there was the huge trope of like you have either like your good girl or your femme fatale. Right. And that was like that was those were the brands women came, right? Yes. And that was it. And Selena really became this iconic figure, kind of within the femme fatale trope, without only yes. being. But she's still again, like you said. She was complicated. She was diverse. She had these good moments. She had this romance with the hero while still being sexy and independent and powerful. Yeah. And she, yeah. Oh, I love the way you talk about her. <laughs> Take it right to my heart. I'm a fan, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for giving up your time today. We really, really appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Okay, so maybe next time we'll actually manage to talk about something other than Catwoman as well. I think she just kind I of- just wonder. Yeah, <laughs> she's kind of the brain right now, I think. <laughs> Oh, I think I'm still recovering from the bad cat wedding, so which is why yeah. we're all thinking about it. <laughs> but again, you're doing fantastic. Everything oh, you do you. with her, with everything else you've done as well, is so beautiful. Yes. Yeah. yeah thank, thank you. you. Thank you for your time. <laughs> okay. I appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Hi. <laughs> right. And we're back. And it's us. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope everyone enjoyed that because. Actually, I hate listening to my own voice, Same. but listening to Joelle Jones again had me just like, ah, man, we got to get her back on the on the show. I know. I am I am obsessed with the way that she loves Catwoman and these other. And I, I want to talk to her more about Wonder Woman and about Lady Killer next time. I'm like, I need to like hold it back. But it's like when you see that she loves Catwoman as much as like everyone else does, it's like. That's why you draw her so well and write her so well. And ah. yeah, you can just yeah. tell when a creator loves the character they're working on. You can feel it. Yeah. I, yeah, no, it was great. And it was, uh, yeah, it was just really, she was really easy to talk to us. So I'm really happy. She, she did get back to us and she was totally down for it. And she was so uh, kind. Yeah. And super generous with her time. I mean, it's like, mm-hmm. it's, it's Saturday. It, uh, it was a Saturday at the busy, uh, yeah. you know, a, a very busy day at the I convention. I mean, the only and... reason we stopped the interview was because I had to run off um, for something else work related. Uh, she seemed content to give us as much keep... time as we needed. It was wonderful. Yeah. Right. So let, so let, well, we'll reach out to her again in a couple months and maybe we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll get yeah. her back on again. Cause you're right. I do want to talk about lady killer wonder woman uh wonder girl all that stuff plus mm-hmm. uh you know uh even more about just like her art and i want to kind of know where that all started yeah absolutely. right and it's and we don't see a lot of uh women in the comic book industry that are both writers and artists right absolutely so i want to dive more into that like again she is someone i could probably pick the brain about for a long time and still still have more questions because she's done so much yeah and she's done it all so well just yeah it's cool <laughs> awesome well i think we'll we'll wrap it up here uh but i do want to do a one quick plug because we brought this up on past shows 
just so I because I want people to go and run and pick it up when they see it. We have talked about this. This is Superman Smashes the Clan. Uh, don't let the cartoony art style fool you. Uh, this is... Uh, it does not pull its punches. It does not pull its punches. They do call them the Ku Klux Klan. Uh, there is racial slurs in this. Straight up, flat out. And uh, I think this is something families should be reading together. Because I think now more than ever, and I have been saying that for the past five years when it comes to this book, and even with a lot of X-Men, uh, now is the time, you know, it's okay to be intolerant to intolerance. And, uh, you know, this is, a, this is a good prime book. It's a three-part series, but this is the cover for the first one. So if you see it, uh, grab it. It's, uh, you know, it's a smaller book, uh, but it's a uh, graphic novel style. Uh, but it's not crazy expensive either. So I highly suggest uh, grabbing a copy when you see it. And I really hope they make uh, a superpowers figure based on that classic uh, first appearance Superman with the black and the yellow, yellow rim shield. And the over-exaggerated uh, little curl. Oh, man. It's so, it. it's so this book is so it's good. Cute. It's so good. Yeah. And it's like, it takes place in the forties as well. Uh, but it's funny cause you read this and you go, wow, didn't I just see this on the news? So, you know, it's, it's, it's still relevant, which is unfortunate, but it's, it's great to read and it's great to, to show this to even as an, like other adults to kids, you know, it's cool to be a good person. And that's kind of what Superman is to me. Uh, and that's why I think books like this are important as well, that we, you know, we can, well, like you said, they don't pull their punches. They call them out as they, they are, and they make those characters, they treat them as such, which are racist. So they say racist things, and we can use that to teach kids that this is bad. And we don't talk to people that way. And we don't treat people that way. So I do. Or just for yourself, if you just as an adult want the satisfaction of watching Superman <laughs> punch the shit out of the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because it is satisfying. <laughs> you have sit down in your favorite armchair with that book and your favorite whiskey. And I tell you, you are in for the most satisfying night. Your golden retriever okay. sitting at your feet. I tell you, this is. <laughs> This is what it's all about. And I do want to bring up these as well. Again, I will. I do not work for Todd McFarlane. I know I was accused of this before uh, on Toy Anxiety. I do not. Uh, these are the superpowers figures I was talking about uh, every episode. And I talk about it every episode on Toy Anxiety. In fact, I've been going on other people's shows, such as Toying Around and Geek Dad Life, and talking about these toys. Uh, they are all over the States now. They have to be at this point. They are 10 bucks a pop. Beautiful figures, beautiful packaging. Uh, you know, Batman, they finally gave us, you know, Jon Stewart. I mean, this is this is such a good time to be, you know, if you like those classic superheroes, now this is a good time to jump into all of this. So I just want to give that a shout out as well for anyone who's looking to collect for themselves or if you have kids or if you have young family members or if you just have a family member that just happens to like action figures. Uh, these are there. And like I said, they're, they're 10 bucks a pop. The vehicles are 20 and 25. You can't, you can't even get a new Marvel action figure for 25, let alone an entire vehicle. So I just want to throw those out there as well. And uh, yeah, Superman smashes the clan is my suggested reading for the week. Mike's just reading every week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to plug it every week. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. But yeah, thank you all so much for joining us. This was, I think, a really cool night. Our first interview, um, being able to touch on some of these things that just keep happening with Warner Brothers and but still being able to touch on comics, Wayne Family Adventures, or the things that almost happened and didn't that we would have liked to have seen. Um, but hopefully we will have more interviews coming forward, um, more just keeping up with the news and everything that's going on. I'd love to touch some more on some of uh, the comics again next week, kind of going it mm -hmm. back to there with all of the other drama, because there are still some really cool things happening um, in like Dark Crisis uh, and a couple of these other verses. So we will... 
and just discussing, just plain old discussing Batman and and its world, right? There's still Absolutely. lots to touch on, and we haven't even scratched like the, the Bat Cat Wedding. We could do a whole episode just talking about the Bat Cat oh, Wedding. Oh man, I'll make sure I have a box of tissues nearby because once <laughs> we start talking about Tom King, it's just like it's I, I'm a hot mess. Just so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's just I love that book so much. Uh, but yeah, but Lexi, I'll let I'll let you do the send off. All right. Well, thank you all so much for being here. As citizens of Gotham, we appreciate you coming in and listening to what is happening in our world. And we will catch you next week on Friday uh, mm -hmm. because I have my Dungeons and Dragons stream Wednesday next week in the world of Caldea. So next week, Friday, same bat time, different bat day, same bat YouTube channel. <laughs> Correct. I love it. Awesome. Have a great night, everyone. And thank you all for watching. And if you did like what you saw, give us a like, hit subscribe, leave comments, all that stuff. We'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, yes. Have a great night, everyone. Bye.